hello 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 i um wanted to do a video and um just to kind of share some information with everybody as well as bring awareness to something and um also to document my journey so um about two weeks ago um i was hit with a diagnosis um, it is called Chiari Malformation Type 1, and it's C-H-I-A-R-I -I Malformation. And um, I was, I went to the doctor because um, my hand didn't, like it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work, I guess. Um, it was weak, and I couldn't like grip anything. Um, and it was painful and um, initially I went to the urgent care and the doctor did a couple of tests and you know kind of felt around and you know can I feel something cold or did I feel him poking me with needles and like different things like that and so he compared it to my for my right and left and um, the, the determination was that I had um, carpal tunnel so, um, my little side hustles, all they had to cut out, um, you know, I'd be braiding hair sometimes. So, um, I had done three different people's hair that within that week. So I was like, okay, so I just did too much. And now I have carpal tunnel and just, I irritated, you know, the whole thing. So... I go to the doctor. Um, he tells me I have carpal tunnel. I wear this wrist brace. Um, it's the weekend. So I wear it over the weekend. They said, you know, take ibuprofen for the inflammation. Um, you should feel better before work on Monday. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I go to work on Monday and I was still irritated. It still wasn't um, much movement in my hand, like in my fingers, I guess, as, as I would have liked. Um, and you know, with me typing all day, I kind of need my hand. And then um, I also did, I went to work on Tuesday. And Tuesday was a little bit more painful than Monday. And so I called my primary doctor. And my primary doctor um, suggested that I go to an orthopedic doctor. Okay, so I went to the orthopedic urgent care. And I saw uh, Dr. Paul Perry, shout out to him, um, at Tri-State Orthopedics. And he went with the initial diagnosis that I had um, carpal tunnel so he did of course some of the same tests or whatever and he's like I'm gonna do an ultrasound I'm gonna prescribe you steroids and I took steroids and something oh and ibuprofen and he said um, come back in a week and you should feel better so I took off of work for the rest of that week and I went um, went back to the doctor after the week you know I didn't do any more hair I kind of followed the rules to as much as possible um, as far as like keeping my activities limited. Um, I took all the medicine. Now, it didn't hurt as much, but I could still feel that there just wasn't something right with my hand. And so um, I, when I went to my follow-up appointment, he looks at me and he said, Christian, I, I looked at your ultrasound and this isn't carpal tunnel. Like your muscles everything around your carpal tunnel area all that is fine so then i'm just like whoa because i know that there's something going on with my hand and so we got some explaining to do so he goes to say that and you know his expert opinion is that there's something going on in my neck and he specifically said my c7 and um, he said it's possible nerve damage in your neck because that'll, um, that'll control some of your mobility. And so I want to do an x-ray and an MRI to kind of check that out. So I'm freaking out because I'm just like, y'all, I came in here for carpal tunnel and I, that's what I wanted to be. You know, I didn't necessarily like the fact that I had carpal tunnel because I felt like it was messing with my life a little bit more than I would like, but now you're talking a little bit more serious with nerve damage. So carpal tunnel don't sound so bad at this point, right? So um, I go, they had the in-office x-ray that day. 
He said, you got some neck straightening, which probably just comes with the job. This happens for everybody these days. You know, looking down at your phone and blah, blah, blah. So your curvature in your neck is not as much as it should be. But that's not going to cause your mobility issues. So I'm going to still do the MRI and then we'll go from there. So I cried that day. Like I completely freaked out. I completely lost it. Because in my head, I had carpal tunnel and I'm coming to get a follow up for carpal tunnel. And you know, I've prepared my brain. I've researched a little bit about carpal tunnel. And I was like, okay, so with a little surgery, six weeks off of work at the most, I'm going to be, you know, bounce back. Right? Right. No. So I freaked out that day and I was like, y'all, I came in here for carpal tunnel. Now you're talking about nerve damage. I ain't really ready for all that, you know? So, um, the, that was on a Tuesday. I went to, I went to have my MRI on a, hmm, a Saturday, either a Friday or a Saturday, something like that. So I had the MRI done and then I went to the doctor to follow up with the MRI the following Tuesday. So he he's like, um, he's, he wasn't in the office. Dr. Perry was not in the office. They said, Dr. Joy is going to see you um, because Dr. Perry's out, but we wanted to give you your diagnosis. <clears throat> so I was like, okay. So Dr. Joy comes in and she's like, all right, Christian. And at that moment, I knew that it was something. So she's like, okay, so I don't want you to freak out or anything, um, but there's something going on, but I don't want you to panic. You know, I it's something serious, but, you know, I just want to make sure that you don't panic. It's going to be okay. And so she's trying to give me this talk because at the last visit, I guess the physician's assistant, which was in both visits, I guess she said that I probably would freak out. But I freaked out because I went in there with one thing on my mind and then you give me something completely different. So, um that's why I freaked out but you know at this point I'm like okay it's possible nerve damage it's something else other than carpal tunnel okay now we just got to figure out what it is so I was okay I was in the right mindset or whatever so um she's like all right well you have a syrinx and so I'm just like well what is that so basically I have a syrinx um that is in my neck and at the time of the MRI it was covering five of the seven vertebrae in my neck so it was really big it was i saw the images later but it was like it was big it was yeah it was yeah it was big so um she was like you have a syrinx basically that's a cyst um and so you'll have to have surgery to have it removed so i left the doctor's office like okay i have to have surgery it's near my spine um this is or it's on my spine and so you know this is serious so you know i get it and i'm just like okay i gotta now i'm thinking okay what do i need to do next she's like i have to refer you to a neurosurgeon but i want to wait for dr perry dr perry is going to let me know who in his professional opinion can handle this so at this point i'm trusting dr perry because dr perry is the one is like no it's not um carpal tunnel is something else oh and at that visit with dr perry he did ask me a lot of different questions about you know how my neck felt in the morning you know if i move certain ways do i feel this and you know he asked me a series of questions i can't remember all of them um but he asked me a series of questions to see if he needed to further go further along with the mri and he did so um, so at this point, Dr. Joy is telling me that she wants to get Dr. Perry's professional opinion on who he needs to refer me to. So we waited for that. And then the following day, um, they called me with an appointment set up for, um, the neurosurgeon. So of course I'm freaking out like, oh my gosh, I have this cyst and what the heck. But Dr. Joy didn't go into a whole lot of detail because she thought I would freak out. She wanted the neurosurgeon to give me all the information because she's like, you know, that's not my profession. Um, in that sense, like, I don't know a whole lot about um, this particular thing. I can give you your diagnosis, but go to the neurosurgeon to get all the details. So me being me, I, um, <laughs> I go to Google, to WebMD, and to Mayo Clinic. 
Um, those are my three websites that I use um, when I need to find something out medically. And I know they said don't use Google. Google will kill you. You'll end up having cancer. But in this sense, Google helped me a whole lot. So I'm just like, okay, I have this cyst, but how did it get there? Like, where did it come from? And it came down to one thing, Chiari malformation. Initially, I didn't know it was Chiari malformation. But based on what I was reading and researching, I knew that, oh my gosh, I have almost all of these symptoms. This is what I have. So I, after probably like two days, I called um, Tri-State Orthopedics back and I said, hey, can you tell me what my diagnosis is? She told me I had a syrinx, but what is my diagnosis? And so the receptionist, she was like, well, I probably can pull that up for you without you having to talk to a nurse. Um, so let me see what, you know, what the notes say, what the dictation says. It's like, okay, cool. So she said, um, I don't know how to say this word. Key. And I said, key Ari malformation. And so I finished it for her and she said, yeah, that type one. Thank you, lady. That's all I need to have a nice day. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I had researched enough to know that this is what I had. So I'll just kind of fast forward a little bit because I'm going to keep doing videos and keep sharing um, what, you know, my journey, I guess. So basically, Chiari malformation is um, your brain is falling out. <laughs> um, so there's a space between your skull and spine. And my brain is like dropping down in that space. That blocks my spinal fluid from going up to my brain as it should. It's not flowing as it should. So instead of my, my fluid going up to my brain, it's creating that cyst. And it's going just making that little pouch grow. So at, um, I did see the neurosurgeon and I have to... Um, I have to have a surgery. Sorry brain fog i had to have a surgery um to create space for my spinal fluid to flow as it should so i have to have a portion of my skull removed and a portion of my the top of my spine removed to open that area up to make make room for the part of my brain that's falling out process that because I had to so my brain is too big for my skull that's basically what it is however um the syrinx being pressured against my nerves um I'll say the cyst because that just in layman terms the cyst is pressing up against my nerves which caused a series of other issues that I didn't know had anything to do with this but um there were think there were things that I were going to my primary doctor about, um, but of course, her being just a family physician, not knowing the neuroscience studies about all of this stuff, you know, she probably just didn't put it all together. But that'll be another video. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you a baseline for what has been happening in my world. Um, I did decide to document just as much. I'll have pictures. Um, this is today is. I don't know what today is. What is today? Today is August 19th. <clears throat> nope, today ain't the 19th. Today is August 16th. Sorry. Today is August 16th. It's 5.40 p.m. I have to do two more MRIs on Monday, the 19th. And... Uh, that's where we are right now so i'll update you guys with a video later um i do want to document the entire process um yeah so that is the, the first part and then i'll come back with more later see you later bye